these parameters as they are. Okay, so I'm going to say don't actually uh, convert that like I told you to. Um, I'm going to delete that and come back up. All right, so just go ahead and solve. solve anything um, in this form and we're just going to assume that the equation is doing the work for us and is corresponding to a rate constant. It is an, um, an empirical formula anyway so the fact that it's empirical meaning it's based on observations it's not a theoretically derived okay if this is um, you know, if this physical process manifests in this way, then the rate is such and such. It's not that way. It's a empirical it's obs observations. If the river is this speed measured in meters per second, this equation gets us a pretty accurate estimation. And so we're just leaving it, leaving it that way. And don't um, don't confuse yourself with the units. Just know that this reiteration rate constant is going to be in per days, and the speed of the river we measure is going to be meters per second. Okay, so that's, that'll be our um, assumption for this because that's what the book indicated. Okay, so we were talking about this balance between um, deaeration, so consumption of oxygen and the uh, essentially the transport of oxygen back into the river. This is happening because we have a gradient. If there's an oxygen deficit, there's a, a physical process that's happening and oxygen is essentially being forced into it because our atmosphere is in a way pressurized um, and so that uh, gas pressure pushing against the, the water is going to push some of the gases into it in effect. Okay, we can look at some typical reaeration rate constants and you can notice how they change. So this is at 20 degrees Celsius, um, again this is per day, units in small ponds and backwaters, the rate is typically 0.1, the rate constant is 0.1 to 0.23, um, whereas if you go up to kind of a large stream, normal velocity, that's 0.46 to 6.9. If you've got rapids and waterfalls and all sorts of things like that, you're getting up above um, 1, up above 1.15. So you can really see this changing as you have more action with the, the water. So if you were to take a, uh, a stagnant Louisiana pond and then add a fountain to it, you're going to drastically increase this, right? So this would be the reason if you have some sort of pond um, to create a fountain spraying water everywhere um, to help whatever um, organisms are in there to have plenty of oxygen in it especially when it gets hot the water holds less oxygen you have a risk of having um, oxygen depletion so those aerators um, those uh, fountains are actually oftentimes designed to be aerators uh, to keep the landscape nice it's beautiful and all these good things so you see them everywhere okay so when we model the um, removal and the reaeration. Um, if we look at the the rate at which oxygen um, is changing, we can see at first we have a strong rate of deoxygenation. So that biological oxygen demand is um, a strong rate that's removing oxygen, and that's decreasing as we have less and less oxygen demanding substances. So at some point we have very little, so this would be high BOD, and then low BOD remaining. So we can see that difference, that deoxygenation is um, dependent on the amount of uh, substrate that's demanding that oxygen. 
the rate of reaeration then it doesn't start off too high but as soon as oxygen is be being demanded and depleted that rate begins to climb so we end up having um, more and more uh, reaeration happening because there's some deficit and actually this this curve here is the inverse of the curve below which is showing the actual uh, dissolved oxygen concentration so as the deficit increases the rate of reaeration is increasing um, so combining these um, these effects we we really can see what happens to this dissolved oxygen where it starts off at some some value maybe uh, a little bit suppressed already it drops significantly and then the rate of reaeration starts to dominate and this might be days and kilometers many miles downstream where we hit this low point so we might discharge something uh, in our rivers here and the river is fine and then down closer to new orleans or something we then see oh wow there's a big fish kill what happened um, so it's important to understand um, when and where this will happen because it's, we need to know um, kind of what impact we're having even if it's uh, pretty far removed from us okay so to model that oxygen deficit uh, we have a few parameters here and we're going to say our initial deficit is d naught so that was our um, if if this is our saturation and this is our initial oxygen value that would be our d naught in fact i'm just going to draw that up so if this is our oxygen concentration this is time or distance and we have this oxygen sag curve with some sort of a saturation here this gap here is the initial deficit um, the deficit at any time or position here any given one that's d and our deoxygenation or um, the way that our deficit is changing over time is going to be equal to the deoxygenation rate minus the reaeration rate so it's gets a little bit um, trippy here with uh, all these inverted parameters our deficit is decreasing meaning we have an increase it's a double negative it's increasing amount of oxygen but it turns out it's um, easier to work with it that way okay so that means our overall equation for the deficit is going to be this deoxygenation rate we said earlier the other day was kd l naught e to the minus kt we have that quantity minus the reaeration rate which was kr times d so that's what we need to integrate okay so i'm going to leave that for you to do um, so go for it no i'm kidding um, we're not gonna we're not gonna bother trying to integrate that ourselves we're just gonna look at the book um, so the book says this is the answer uh, fortunately so we're all happy we didn't have to do that ourselves we have this uh, equation here where we have this uh, rate constant for um, decay times l naught minus reaeration minus decay um, all that times e to the minus kdt minus e to the minus krt all that plus our initial deficit times e to the minus krt so we have this big equation with all these parameters we've talked about and we probably have to go back and you know double check so this l naught is the ultimate bod remaining this is the initial deficit kr is that reaeration constant kd is the deoxygenation rate constant um, all these parameters and we can solve then for the deficit at any given time if we know those parameters so that's pretty handy um, we can just insert a time and then we know something about the system if we want to then find the distance we just need to know the speed of the river 
and convert between the time and the distance. So this, this conversion should be really easy here. Um, we should know something about the flow rate or maybe the speed and um, dimensions of the river, something like that. We, we should be able to convert that without too much problem. There is an issue occasionally when the rate constants are the same. If we have the same value here for kr and kd, now this is the, the constants, this is not the actual rates. Um, the actual rates are always the same once we hit this, um, this critical point because at that moment we have this, they're equal to each other. We have the same amount of oxygen going in as going out. So the overall rates are always going to find an equilibrium right here, and that's how we define our um, critical point. But the constants, depending on the river, depending on uh, the conditions, sometimes these become the same, and then we're dividing by zero, and that's a problem for the equation. Um, so like I say here, if that happens, um, and only when that happens, we have a different equation that's a little simpler, uh, and we use this. So this is a um, special case. I'm giving you both of these equations um, on your equation sheet. Depending on what, what I assign for homework, you might have something like this. Um, and you should, you should recognize essentially that the one that divides by, that's possible to divide something by zero is the normal one we use. And then if, if dividing by zero it, uh, becomes a problem, then we use this one. Both of them are essentially solving for the deficit at some time t. All right, so the last um, point of this modeling and the equations we have to use for modeling, kind of the last remaining question is, would simply be, what is our, um, what is the way we can find that distance or time when that critical point happens? Okay, so we, we could just try a bunch of times and see when, what's the minimum, and that's not too hard to do with Excel, um, but we could also go ahead and rearrange and solve the whole thing and find the time at which the critical point happens, and we have this equation. And again, I, I'm giving you this one on the uh, exam as well. One thing you'll notice here is, again, we have the problem. Uh, we can't really solve this if these two uh, rate constants, uh, the yeah, rate constants are the same. Okay, so just um, to make a couple things clear, this xc that we're we may be interested in, that's our distance downstream for the critical point. That's our point where our oxygen is at the minimum it will be. The u is the stream speed. Uh, might be kilometers per day or something like that. The TC is the time elapsed. Um, and then that would be the time elapsed between the discharge point and the distance XC downstream. And I'm just putting that here to, um, to show, you know, we can convert you know, the distance is going to be the speed times the time, and the time is going to be the, the distance divided by the velocity. Um, you, you know that. Okay, so we just have this equation, um, and I think that's about, about all we have time for. I do have a couple of um, example problems here uh, that we can work through. Um, so what I would recommend, you know, maybe I'll put one of these on the homework, there's a couple of problems from the book here. Um, these do have solutions in the book, so definitely use these as you're studying um, and as a reference for the, the homeworks. And let's see. Um, yeah, we don't have time for them this moment. We can also go through these uh, during our exam review, um, if, if not the homeworks, if you'd like. So any questions? or issues. Again, I'm sorry to have gone uh, 
so fast through it all, but for the sake of giving you guys Tuesday off. So hope that's worth it. Yes? No class Tuesday. Correct. All right. Well, I hope that I see you guys around. This is, I guess, the last day of our uh, classes for the semester in person. So I'll be in touch. You'll see me online. Uh, after Thanksgiving, we'll have two classes and then the final. Um, I'm just going to essentially do, um, do classes as I do for everyone watching online. So you're welcome to tune in uh, synchronously or watch it later the asynchronous manner. Um, I will be, just fair warning, I'm going to be uh, working remotely and not from my home. I'm going to be visiting um, some family and friends. And so I should have a space and it should be no problem. But if I do end up with internet connection issues, what I'm going to be doing is I'll record the, the lecture regardless. So even if the live feed ends up cutting out for whatever reason, I'm going to keep going through it. Hopefully, it, if that were to happen, that it would return. But I'll have a, um, a video posted for you shortly after, um, worst case. All right, so have a, have a good break and another break after that one. And I'll see you guys um, next semester or, or sometime. And as always, feel free to reach out, um, ask questions. I, I meant to, to do a, a Zoom um, Q&A for anybody needed for exam two, and then nobody asked, so I completely forgot. Uh, happy to do that, and just bother me if I, you know, if I forget or anything. I'm happy to give um, kind of office hours that way. Open Zoom, come in, solve problems. Um, just let me know. We'll make that. We'll make that work. All right, that's all.